Results out from Coronation Fund Managers today show 112% rise in headline earnings a share to 128 cents for the year to September. This, of course, was in line with guidance given in a recent trading update. The group's lifted its total dividend per share by 154% to 127 cents. Joining me with more is Hugo Nelson. He's the CEO of Coronation. Hugo, thanks very much for coming in today. It looks like everything really playing in your favor over the past year, and this is the result of that. Yeah, it's been a strong year. Uh, the JSC All Shares Index up 21%, and that obviously feeds through into our revenue line, which was up 61%. Um, and um, in addition to that, also on the pricing side, um, we achieved 70 basis points overall in terms of the net fee of a sort of 56 basis points uh, historically, or in the in the prior year, 2009 year. And then it was a strong flow year as well, particularly on the retail side and the unit trust side where we achieved sort of 12 billion rand of positive inflow. So all of that helped the revenue line tremendously, um, up 61%, and costs were fairly well controlled. Um, we have quite a large variable cost component in our business model, which rose in sort of lockstep with some of these sort of rising trend lines of assets under management and profitability and so on. Um, but, um, you know, contained well enough in order to produce the the bottom line leverage of sort of over 100 percent up so very pleasing yeah, yeah. Now obviously when times aren't so good some of those costs come down because you said there are uh, largely a lot of variable costs yeah. in those numbers uh, how about um how about annuity income um, how much of your income base is annuity income which feeds through every year um it's a, that's a good question we um I forget the exact metric, but something like 40% of the um, assets that we manage are for clients who have been with us for more than 10 years. So our business is really all about performance and delivering perfor investment performance for our clients. As long as we do that over the long term, which fortunately we have been able to do, um, we, you know, clients, their confidence levels increase, their ability to trust you in terms of uh, your services into the future rises. and they don't necessarily move around a lot. So um, it's hard to break it out as to what exactly is annuity and what isn't, but it's our experience of clients is that we don't experience a, lot, a high degree of, of change or churn from year to year. So it, it really just boils down to delivering that, that service. You also stress in the commentary that you are a long-term investor and you try to ignore some of the short-term noise, but that must be quite difficult in markets like these, particularly when you have quantitative easing coming through one day, when you have sovereign debt problems in Europe the next day. How do you manage to ignore the short-term noise and remain focused on the long-term? It is difficult. It's, it's really rooted in our culture. Um, we have a strong culture of ownership um, amongst the, the firm staff own about 30% of the firm. So um, they, you know, that means that they therefore are the custodians of the culture. We focus on the long term, the way decisions are made um, are really robust, not based on whether we think assets are going to rise or fall, but actually based on what we think they're worth. And it does mean that at times, um, you look a little bit silly. Um, usually those times are inflection points in markets towards the end of a really raging bull market. So for example, we did look a little bit silly at the end of the commodity bull market because we didn't own commodities and we were underperforming for those six months uh, right at the end. Um, but that's quite usual. That will tend to happen. Um, uh, and um, it actually is influenced by the, the age of your business. So the longer you've been doing what we do, and the long and the more stable your team is, so uh, people have you know seen these sorts of things before, the more able they are to stand apart from the herd. So it it takes a bit of building, um, but it is bound up in the culture very strongly. Uh, assets under management up 28 percent, almost at 200 billion rand. How much of that was net new inflows? How much due to, to performance over the period? Yes, the um, the overall change is 28 percent there, and um, roughly it splits out that um, in the order of 12 billion, 12 and a half billion, were due to net flows, um, and the balance is due to the performance of the market. Um, and as I've said, or sorry, due to performance, which in our case would be the all share plus whatever excess return we deliver over that. Um, so that's how it breaks out, yeah. And of course, that market share moving up to, to make you the third largest fund manager in the country. Uh, are you aiming higher than that? I presume you are. Yeah, that third largest statistic is actually, uh, it's a, what we're really talking about there is not, that's not with reference to the 198 billion. It's with reference to the, the retail assets that we manage, which, is, which are in the order of 45 billion. And really there we're talking about 
um, long-term savings. So we're excluding cash and money market orientated assets out of um, the, you know, certainly our Manco assets as well as uh, the competitor Manco assets. And on that basis, we rank as the third largest. We were sixth largest a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite a positive year for that part of our business. Well, so tell us about the retail offering, particularly some of the unit trusts, because I think a few of them come through as top performers in, in their, in their seg segments, don't they? Yeah, in, in our core fund range, we have about five funds. The the most um, aggressive of, of which is a product co is a fund called Top Twenty, which seeks to beat the um, the Aussie Forty, and that fund is delivered in the order of seven percent return in excess of the Aussie Forty over ten years. Um, all of the funds in the range of sort of first quartile funds. Um, the lowest risk product would be a product called Strategic Income, which is beat cash by more than two percent over you know, the last sort of 10 years or since inception. So um, the, the product range is, is very strong and well entrenched. We have some new business areas like um, Africa Fund area and the Global Emerging Markets area. The Africa Fund area has been quite spectacular. They've got a, there's a, one of the two products there is a product which invests in African markets excluding the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And they've delivered 32% ahead of their benchmark since inception and, you know, won a, an award as best Africa manager as a result. So actually, almost regardless of whether, where you look, whether you're looking at fixed income oriented products or growth oriented products or balanced products, all of the retail products are, are sort of first quartile um, in, you know, since inception for their, in, in the categories in which they, they are classified. Well, we were chatting to Rob Tarr from Nedbank Capital just a short while ago. He, he suggested that some of the new flows you saw coming into Coronation could have come from hedge funds, particularly institutional money that was in hedge funds during the recession. They, they pulled that and put it through to you. I mean, is that what you've, you've seen? I'm not entirely sure that that would be the case. I think that um, in South Africa, the retail market is a is a growing it's a it's a growing market segment. So it it, it uh, in in the aggregate experience so is unit trusts here. Yeah. Unit trusts experience in the aggregate positive flows every year and have done so for the last you know sort of ten or more years, and that continues and that comes about because of people retiring buying living annuities, doing it in a, in a new generation way, which is really to have unit trust building blocks. Um, so they th tend to leave the formal pension fund savings market and move into the retail market. Um, and that really creates a nice wind in the sails of the entire retail industry, not just for ourselves. Um, and and w you know we just took, uh, I think the exact percentage is about 17% of the positive flows into the retail market in this last 12 months. Quickly, how are you seeing it the, the current year? You do say in the commentary that we shouldn't expect the same again. Would you expect a, a positive performance though? We don't to, to deliver a positive performance. Um, it is, our business is obviously very sensitive to what happens to the key drivers, be it um, particularly asset prices, particularly Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Um, but um, it, uh, so, you know, I think that we're sort of cautiously optimistic, but the base was incredibly low for this year, hence, yeah. hence the very strong performance. So we're not going to double it again this no, year? I seriously <laughs> doubt that. Hugo, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in today.